into boxing HQ with unbeaten prospect Nathan Deeney. So, amazing, amazing fights coming up. Can you turn the music down, please? Because nobody can hear me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, some amazing fights coming up, um, especially um, Anthony Joshua and Parker. So, uh, really looking forward to that. We've got a couple of my colleagues here, one rubbing his chest at the moment. Um, who is uh, going to be nipping down there, so really looking forward to it. So, yeah, just to introduce um, a good friend of mine, actually, Nathan, Nathan Eaney. Welcome to Into Boxing, on the box with me, Dan. And uh, so, just to get basically put people in the picture, people who have never actually seen him or heard of Nathan before, uh, Nathan's unbeaten, he's just, he's just about his second fight, um, next Saturday, the King's Hall in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, so, tell us a bit about, about you then, what got you into boxing? Yes. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> he said to expand a bit more. Um, well, to, to be fair, I've been boxing since I was first born. Because my dad was a boxer beforehand, and that, that was the main reason why I got into boxing. My dad always wanted me to look after myself. So, as you know, we sat. As you know, growing up as kids, we'd be playing football over the park, and then yeah. that seven pm call would come. Come on, Nate, get over here, and I'd have to go boxing. But I used to love it. So yeah, my dad was the main reason why I'm boxing now and boxing from a young age. It was horrible, I remember sitting on there playing, just about playing a bit of, bit of what was it, not match of the day, bit of man on to that and then he had to go, I not happy about that. <laughs> so talk to our followers and all, or collectively 150,000 of them, so tell us about your amateur career, so what did you, just tell us about it from the start. Well, um, I had 90 fights in total, which I think is quite a few fights as an amateur. Um, overall, I beat some very top kids. During my time, beat Terry Flanagan, who went on to win a world title. Um, beat Shane Singleton, won a British title, and a whole host of other lads that were pretty decent, to be fair. But and, um, I didn't do too bad. Went over to Denmark in like a box cup international tournament. Won a gold medal over there against one of the top Danish kids at the time, who was like the number one welterweight. And um, I beat him pretty convincingly. But um, overall, uh, it, did. it was it was. Oh, it was all right. Nothing amazing, but it, that was a good amateur. That's it. So, me knowing you personally as well, and I know people don't really want to hear too much about that, but you weren't really a, a man until like last week, <laughs> which is mad. I mean, I remember you as 18 years old and being about four stone. Do you know what I mean? So, you're a really late developer and you've kind of just gone into your own skin. Do you feel that'll help and prolong your career? Well, massively, because like where I work at the college, students think I'm a lot younger than what I am. Even though I'm a bit deluded and thinking I am a lot younger than I am. Are oh, you a bit of a dilf? <laughs> a little bit. Right? Well, I've got a daughter on so I think I am. Dilf. But, <laughs> but no, I, th I think yeah, it will prolong my career because obviously I was a late developer. I didn't, I wasn't grow into a man until probably mid twenties, and definitely now I can feel it in terms of the power and stuff that I've got. And he's definitely translating over in terms of when I'm sparring, when I'm fighting, and how strong I'm feeling against people as well. So, you see what you're saying there about your, about your, your job? What you, so, what is it you do when you're not boxing? Well, I'm, I'm a sports lecturer at Newcastle, underlying college. Um, so, just teaching sport, all different areas, from like, like mainly B-Tech, mainly B-Tech stuff, but I teach HMD uh, degree students as well. So, what do uh, you do on a day-to-day -day thing? Day-to-day, -day, just pretty much teaching sport, so teaching nutrition, Teaching a bit, a bit of psychology, a bit of sport form and action, so they go over like energy systems and all that kind of stuff. Basically, everything that, that's linked to sport, really. Awesome. So, obviously, I followed your career. I was there for most, pretty much 99% of your amateur fights. And at the start of your amateur career, you have noted as being a fan, an amazing, amazing boxer. Very fast, very, very quick on your feet. And you didn't really stop many people, did you, until no. you were a lot older into your, your amateur career. Why do you think that was? Why, why do you think you were starting to, because people wouldn't want to fight you because of that. So you went full circle, literally full circle from being a boxer to literally an absolute puncher. What, why, why was that, do you think? I think growing up, obviously, you don't have a certain belief in your punch. I mean, my dad, he was known as a punch. Anyone who, anyone who speaks about my dad yeah. in boxing, they know that that guy could bang, and that was his main attribute. But I never seemed to, didn't never seem to get that for whatever reason. But then, as my boxing progressed, I was finding better and better people. The thing is, I never got to stop myself. I very rarely got hurt in boxing. Mm. Um, and I think because obviously the standard increased, it was even harder to stop the kids. So when I, I, I don't know, I think the power developed to come along. I just 
you can just feel it now in terms of I've watched a few guys obviously Golovkin's one of my main one of yeah. my main fighters that I really enjoy yeah, watching he's not, he's not going to have go good yeah, is he? Yeah, so, yeah. I know if Justin Baker's watching <laughs> he'll be hating that but but yeah <laughs> go. so just watching power punch starts just seeing how they do things and try, trying to copy their traits a little bit and I think it is working to be fair to be honest that leads perfectly on to what I, what I wanted to speak to you about so is there anything differently or like do you feel that you change your style since you've gone pro? Do you, feel, do you feel like you're sitting down more on your shots or what, what is there anything you've changed since you've been a pro? I definitely feel I'm not as moving back as much sitting on the back foot to making it look a bit negative when I'm boxing. But in the same at the same time, because I am trying to tip it harder, I'm leaving my shots out a bit too long as well. So my coach Steve Woodfine from home, he's making sure when I'm ba -ba bang ba -ba bang straight in and out not leaving my shots there too long because that's when they can come over the top and counter me. But it's mixing that speed and the power, just leaving out just a slight bit, hurting them, and then getting back out. So it's actually one thing that this isn't, I actually don't know, um, but so obviously your dad was a long time coach. Yeah. He was my coach when I was boxing. Yeah. So what what does he do differently then? Because you, your dad was very, very, you just like you watch with me, very, very, you know, very good box. Is there anything differently that, you, that you're kind of doing now, do you think? To be fair, my dad, I, I never, before, I would never really trust anyone else to coach me in terms mm. of just trusting someone. If, there's very good coaching in Stoke, but for me, myself, my dad was the only person who I ever trusted. So, going with Steve, it was very weird at first, mm. but he is a fantastic coach. Yeah. Fantastic. The lads at home, honestly, the amateur kids, they sparred a pro the other day, and every single one of them, were fantastic with him because he's created some excellent fighters. It's gone. It's not just sticking your feet. He want he wants you to use your attributes, move, but ba, 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 bang, but but stick it in as but well. Solidly. One thing I find is when Nate with Nathan showed me kind of um, even like the pictures I've seen. So I'm right thinking that Catch is the, the same place, isn't he? Another yeah. local lad. He's on again on the. He's on the same card as you, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. Same. Got eight so, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah, that's for the. Is that is it the Masters, Masters this time around? I think so. For him, yeah, for, for, for Luke. And again, make sure you keep, you know, everybody can, can come, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, so uh, brilliant, absolutely wicked. So you, every single guy, I've seen these pictures, these people, these gems, they're all in immaculate shape. But did he really whip you into shape there, guys? Because he looks like unbelievable. Is he Trojan? Well, me and Luke boxed as amateurs. Had an absolute amazing fight. Like some people say it was the best fight they've ever seen. The atmosphere was incredible. But the one thing that you can never not look for, one, having a fantastic chin, is two, he's unbelievably fit. And that my first ever session at home opened my eyes up to the reason why he is so fit, because he brutal the training that they And you're talking about Luke here, Luke here. Luke, yeah, I'm talking about home in general, but I'm talking about why they're so fit. The circuit training's hard, the one to one pads is hard, the bag works hard, but everything works together really well. It's like you're not just doing any, any fluff or nothing that's not gonna work. It's mm -hmm. all, there's a specific aim behind what they're doing. And what we are doing. Oh, to be honest, I, I don't know if you mind us coming down maybe one one time. Absolutely. Obviously, I have a word with Steve. Absolutely, yes. We'll come down and and uh, maybe have a look at what the gym exactly are it's like. Mm. So that'd be awesome. So um, so yeah, going for what you're saying now. So I always like asking these random questions too because I think ah, I know you, you're the best mate in the world. But people out there and all these hundred billion people, I don't know you. So if you could spend one week with any trainer, because you're talking about trainers. Okay. Who would you pick? Who, Adam, who would be that training? Adam Booth, 100%. Why? Just, I think he's very t technically great. If you ever listen to his stuff in the corner, it's absolutely perfect, the instructions he gives to him. I think Groves should never have left him, personally, but even though he's still done excellent, Adam Booth's just an amazing trainer. I just think he's got some excellent qualities about him. Hmm. So, yeah. I'd, Is there anything you'd feel you'd, you'd, you'd kind of ask him for work on, do you think, if you were with him? I don't know. I'd just let him do whatever he wants. Because he's known for that elusiveness, yeah, moving, isn't he? That bit moving to your right, moving different. Instead of yeah. just moving one way, mix his shots and keeping the reins. There's a game plan behind what he's doing with his fires anyway. He's still pretty well though, Groves, hasn't he? Oh yeah. Did you well. watch the fire the other day? Yeah, I did. Good and, one. and if you pick Eubank, you haven't got a clue about boxing. Yeah, any of you? Did, yeah. they, did any of you pick? Yeah, you oh, that, well, that goes without saying. Yeah. Did John? <laughs> he, he did, yeah. Right, cool. So, you obviously, just tell us really, because obviously I, when and where, would you tell us where and when you're fighting next time around? Um, 17th of March, so next Saturday, um, it's at the King's Hall, and um, yeah, the, obviously tickets have gone well for the show so far, 
I think it'd be a fantastic atmosphere. I've got my boys that were there supporting me last time at Warsaw. Fantastic atmosphere. You were there. Ace. Amazing. It was mint, honestly. Yeah. When you come out, uh, can, we, can we say what you come out to? Or is it a surprise yeah, again? I might just leave it. Leave Shall we leave? Yeah, it? leave okay, it. okay. Well, it's a surprise, especially for the lads that are local. And let's just say, when we were there in, in Warsaw, oh my God, it was, it, there was, I think there was what about, we were traveling about 50, 60 of us, maybe a bit more. Yeah. I swear to God, it was like there was a thousand of us. It was, yeah. it was ace, absolute yeah. quality. So, what does it feel like, you know, fighting in your hometown? Well, I've never done it in terms of a pro, so I don't know just yet. But I think it will be really good in terms of I think the atmosphere is going to be top notch, and there's going to be other people there watching that potentially could become a fan of mine. If mm. they watch me fight and they're impressed with me, there's more people mm. to obviously jump on board in the future. Well, certainly if you're ever going to capture an audience locally or whatever, and plus I wouldn't even say locally, if anyone's just tune in, we'll, we'll, sure we'll, we'll upload the video when he's fought, and last time, I mean, going back to really your last opponent, your last opponent, I spoke to you, your opponent, Dar Daryl Sharp, wasn't it, your last yeah. opponent, and he's never ever been stopped, and he's, he's fought some of the, the toughest kids, some right bangers, and I spoke to him after and said, you know, well done. And uh, he said that you were literally the, the hardest puncher that he'd ever been in the ring with. And to say that he's saying you're going to stop a lot, a lot of lads. Do you know what I mean? And that surely that would pick your spirits right up, considering obviously in your, your amateur career. Stuff. Oh yeah, massively. Obviously, when I fought him, he played a very good mind game. He'd crack him with a shot, and he just go, "Come on, come on." So this is so you weren't even flinching him. He just played that mental game. But I did know, I knew I was hurting him, but for some reason he was just very, very durable. And he said to me afterwards, I'll stop a lot of lens, which I'll take that, I'll take that as a positive. And hopefully that's what's going to happen, because that's what people want to see. People want, well, you name it, man. Yeah. Well, so you've you, got you, you to, you yeah. certainly hit a man, but you need, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say anything else. But still, so, if, so we've got obviously the trainer, who, who would be your dream trainer. Who would be like, who would be the, the dream person to spend a 12, let's say 10 round sparring session with, who, who would it be? If you could learn the most from, or even just, I'm talking current as well, not in the past, current, yeah, who would it be, who, who would it be, who would you pick? Um, in terms of like, of all time, Joe Kelsey is one of my favourite fighters, but currently, in his prime, not now he's, now he's older, mm. but in his prime, Golovkin would be one of the ones out, just yeah. because I think he's, he's a lot better boxer than people actually realise in terms of the range he keeps, Obviously, little things he does defensively where he's moving. He is an amazing fighter, but people just see a come forward fighter <laughs> banging everyone else, and that's not that's not why he stopped all them guys. No. It's because there's, there's some there's some intelligence behind what he's it's doing. It's subtle, isn't it? Like every, everything Golovkin does. It's I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in there to get absolutely pasty. <laughs> But, but yeah, I think it'd be really interesting. Yeah, but you'd learn a lot from it, wouldn't you, at the end of the day, and that's, if you're good for that style, because you're a lot taller as well, aren't you? Yeah. So, you don't really see that very often, do you, from a taller fighter, so that's awesome. So, obviously, you said a little bit earlier that, you know, in your amateur career, you literally beat current world champions and British European champions. You beat them, they're the current champions now, a lot yeah. of them. Surely that must make you think, I beat them. Whether, it, whether what point you ever create, you still must think, I beat them. Do you know what I mean? I, I surely I can do exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? If, if surely you can. Well, that's the main reason why I turned professional in the end. Because obviously I'm 28 now. I've still got a few years left. I'd probably say a nice three-year window left where I'm in my prime. Um, if I didn't turn over, knowing that I'd beaten some of them kids in the past, I'd always regret it, thinking, what, yeah. what if? Why did I not do that? Mm. So that's the main reason why I've done it now. Um, mm. Because. I think I can do some good things, but it's just making sure you stay focused and obviously get opportunities from your manager, Errol. And so, keep active, I suppose, as yeah, well. I mean, yeah. you've got to get them under, them under your belt, haven't you, at the end yeah. of the day. So we've got a big fight coming up in regards to, and again, anybody watching, again, the full love to all of the followers, all 150,000 collectively. Thank you so much um, for, for liking a page, liking a post. We really, really appreciate it. We're just a bunch of lads who love boxing. And thanks to every single one of you. If you've got any questions for Nathan, we're live. This isn't made up. Um, look, this is live. We're, we're here right now. So if you've got any questions, please fire them over. And then I'll ask Nathan if you've got any questions. Here's your window to do it. It's just what we're talking about uh, to... You want... How would we see it on there? I don't mind. I don't like that. <laughs> so uh, Joshua, so yeah, in fact we will. So Joshua against Parker um, yeah. is currently coming up now. Um, that's very, very, very soon. So how do you see that going? Who do you, you think is going to win? Um, Parker is a good fighter. 
obviously very fast, but I just think the size of Joshua was going to be one of the telling things against against um, who was going to actually win. I mean, you can't judge the Huey Fury fight with Parker because Fury would have made anyone look terrible the way that he was moving and yeah. doing his things. But for me, Joshua's going to jab him and probably stop him. Um, but if you would say Fury, I think he takes. I think he beats all of them. So just got looking on some of the things that people have said. So. Uh, Jimmy the Atom Manchester. Hiya Jimmy, thanks for, for coming back on. Jake, thanks for watching. He's an old gym mate of ours back in the day. Uh, Viking Warrior. Ooh. Oh, That's from the Denmark days. Denmark days. <laughs> uh, N N Terry Jones and Nathan Topman, good to see you. Yo bro from Ian, who else is coming here? So, does your dad still have the footage of your field spa with gas? With him? With gas? Or is that supposed uh, to be gas, gas. gas? I was talking about back in the day. We, um, I say I didn't get stopped many times. I was, I was like 15, about four stone, and we were on the park doing some sparring against this 16 stone nutter, and he hit me with a body shot. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that did. And that's what he said back in the day. That was amazing stuff. If you want to see, I haven't made, I haven't, I haven't got it anymore. And if you want to see true bullying, me and Nathan sparred when we were about. I was about 12. I was about 8. You were <laughs> 8. You were about 9. And then basically, we went for about 65 rounds. It's on YouTube. We'll find, I'll put it on the page just for a laugh. You'll see me and my bright orange umbro thing. It's quite funny. Cool. So, yeah, so Joshua Parker. So, what we wanted to write, so I think personally, Joshua Parker, I think that. I think that Parker can beat Joshua. I genuinely oh, yeah, do. Yeah, in terms of attack. When you, you, when I do. I just genuinely think he can beat him, but he needs to have the right game plan. I think that Parker's the faster fighter. Okay, if he moves, if he moves, bum, 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 and tries to steal this, I think he can win. Yeah, hundred percent. At the end of the day, but he need, but he cannot get involved. No. If he gets involved against that bigger, stronger man, he is going to tear him a new one. He yeah. is fact. He's absolute fact. But if he comes, if he comes in and just like, because you've seen him on the, I've just seen him on the bags, but he's really, really fast with his straight shots. All he needs to do is slip on, ba 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 ba, move, gone, move around the ring. When it comes, slip off to, and then do you know that you can't, you can't stay there with Joshua. If he stays there, he'll get stopped. Yeah. But the, I, I honestly think there is, there is a chance that Park can win. Yeah. I genuinely do. Yeah. So what I want to do, I want to have a little bit of fun, and that's what I like to do because, you know, whatever. We only live once. So we, we started like a little competition for the for the fighters that we actually get in the studio. Yeah, yeah but men have you? No, I said they're in the car. It's alright, right. You can tell me hands. Can you do that? No, I haven't got the gloves either. Because you're not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've got a bit of a competition we're going to do where we can see how many punches we can throw in 60 seconds. Um, but we don't have a uh, pair of gloves at the moment. But what I can do is bring... Do you want to come on and say hello? Oh, me? Yeah. No. No, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, come on. Have you heard... Go grab it. Have yeah. you heard... Um, you go grab it, John. Have you come heard... Come sit with me, come who, sit with me. Who, um... Hello. This is Big John, Big J. So, uh, is it true that Anthony Joshua is sparring with Tekken? I saw that. Yeah, as far, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, though, that's that's surely a massive, massive opportunity for him to, because he's quite similar in many ways. He so, might be a little bit more rougher. He might be a little bit more rough around the edges, I'd say, Takam. I don't think he's as polished as what Parker could be. But, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I think that's, that's decent sparring, to be fair. We were watching, I was watching that um, fight live, VIP. Um, and, Hold on. Uh, <laughs> um, I was a bit worried for Joshua. Just, I was a bit worried for Joshua. As it went on, yeah. because what what you don't see on the telly, or what you don't feel, or what you don't see is like the actual. Is, you can hear his breath. Mm. You can you, you can hear him flagging and. He, like me and Don went to um, the um, Klitschko one, uh -huh. and we were, we were right at the front. And I thought it was gone. I mean, everybody just went. What do you mean the fight went later? Yeah, yeah that, I think I honestly think I'm sure that. People... I just stood there going, uh, "This is not going to work," because I was just I was just having some banter with the um, yeah. Ukrainians going, "Where's your neck?" There's like millions of us, and then like three of them. I'm like, and they're looking at me going. 
<laughs> the thing is though, he was gassing. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he was gassing. He, it, I think that Takam was a very unlucky and I think that Joshua was very, very, very lucky because I think that if that had gone much further, I think that Takam would have put that pressure on. Do I think that Joshua still would have won? Yeah, I do. Do you think, do you think um, he can work against Joshua by a sparring attack? Do you think he'll fancy his um, chances? Again. Against Hakan? Again? Or, yeah, yeah, if there's ever a rematch. I don't think he'll ever rematch him. No. Too much to lose. Nothing to gain from the fight. No. no it's it's nothing to gain from the fight. So we've got Nathan strapping up over here. Um, so what we're going to do, going back to what we did, because we, we left the gloves in the car. Anyway, so we're going to do a bit of a board. We're going to get a, a board up here, on, on here at uh, Interboxing HQ. Maybe up here or maybe up here. We'll see. But um, we want to, any fighter we get coming in here, we're going to see, we're going to we're going to have a bit of a competition against the fighters of who can throw the most amount of shots in sixty seconds. <coughs> now I know how fast Nathan is. Jump me them over, kid. I'll go on the pads, and we'll see how fast Nathan Eaney really is. Right. So if he's oh these are. I've already had two hours sessions tonight. You what? I've already had two hours tonight. Whoa. These right, are so sweaty as anything. Right, so we'll see how fast Mr. Nathan Eaney. Oh, these are gross. Who's had their hands on here? It's not. It's not. So water from the car. Oh, it's like right, it. condensation. So, so we're going to do condensation. So, right, where are we right. looking here? Where are we looking? Right. Are we ready, Mr. Nathan Eaney? Can, yeah. can I have someone with a countdown? You're standing up here. And a stopwatch. Stand a little for you. Wait a second. Stand a little for you. Wait a second. You do one too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a little tester. Let's see how fast this will do. Yeah, Maybe five yeah. seconds worth. Yeah. You might be a real good boxer and really hard as well. Knock the pictures down, mate. <laughs> well, come this way. Come over a little bit more. No, it's fine, man. No, how about there? Turn, turn you right, yeah, I'll come here. Yeah, you go there. Yeah, how's that? I can't see that. Can't see that. Go, go back where you want. Go back where you want. Don't worry, I'm not going to touch your bloody pictures. Right, right, right. Right. After we'll do five seconds just to practice. Yeah. Yeah, so Paul, you need to count. You get, your music on. get me music on, ready go, let's see how fast Nathan Eaney really is. Get yes. me music on there, Paul. Just turn it up. You ready? Yeah. After three. One. Oh, what's it? How long did you Are you ready count, Paul? What's the minute? 60 three seconds. Three. Make sure you don't let's let's see how shots. fast he get is. Get ready? Count the shots, you ready? Go! How many do we get? 180 punches. Oof! So that's three punches a second. Fast um, that No. The, the, yeah. the adjudicator there. Fair enough. Got that right. Give me your gloves, man. Cheers. Give me your gloves, man. <laughs> so, Big John. Can you make a note of that? Big John's um, having a go. So, Nathan Eaney. I'm just going to be shattered myself here. Do you know what it is? Holding these gloves up. <laughs> All this. 180. Yeah. Punches yeah. in 60 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, I thought it was me. So you're Whoa! Would have pushed a bit on. 180 in 30 seconds. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Six punches. Is that right? <laughs> Six punches a second. If I knew it was 30. I know you're fast, but you're not faster than me, mate. <laughs> right. Are you ready for this, Big J? <laughs> right then. Into boxing fans, what have we got? Has anyone said anything? I heard it myself, yeah. Jesus Christ, I can't even count it. Yeah, he's fast, he's fast. So get ready for Big John, how many, how many have we got anybody who's... <laughs> we need some many guesses here, how many Big John going to get? I'm still 30 seconds, are you ready for this? Warm up, warm up, where's the warm up? Right, go on. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Ready? Fast counter, boys. <clears throat> Go! I'll knock my head off if he knocks his mic to us. <laughs> <laughs> Smash 
watching it. I'm not. Well, if you can't put it. If you should. <laughs> Look at this. That's 15 seconds, That's 15 seconds. He's done 12 rounds. Come on, mate. I'm amazing. I'm 30 seconds. It's 127 punches. 127. Tell that it's fast. Funny. Funny. Right, Donny. 41 seconds here. Manny turned that. Right then, well I'll tell you what, that was good fun and I think that was 180 punches in 30 seconds. It's going to be hard to beat that boys. Yeah, if I know it was 30, I could have got a few more because I was feeling the pace towards it. Let's feel the pace. Let's have a go. No. I'll come back. I'll come, come, back. Back. come back. back, you'll come back. I'll come back, I'll come back. Right, lovely, so I'm not going to keep here too long here because we're all absolutely shattered. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I just want to say again a massive, massive thank you. Uh, to all of our followers and um, just back to Nathan really so what have you got to say to your fans who are going to come out and see you? Um, thank you very much for obviously being there and obviously for the continued support as well yeah. it's alright people just coming up to one fight but it's getting that consistent fan base going and the people that are coming again thank you so much because you're the ones that are going to make my dream a uh, reality because obviously you need a good following and you guys are doing it for me, so thank you very much. No, my pleasure, man. Every single one of us, we really appreciate you coming on. And what about your sponsors? Have you got any, what, anything you'd like to say to your sponsors? At this moment in time, we've got UK Medical Experts. Um, UK Expert Medical, should I say. Um, they're sponsoring me and my dad's company, I Spore. Okay. They're sponsoring me at this moment in time. I am, I am looking for sponsors in the future, but okay. any cool. local people out there, if you're interested and you, and you like what you see, just get in contact with me. Get yourself down on the 17th if you want to come on, look how good this kid really is. Because I've sort of seen from the start, John is just re ready to have a heart attack after that, right, mate? <laughs> 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 but uh, for everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, for me, down in the box, big thank you to Nathan. Thank you, guys. And uh, over and out, thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you. Don't forget to tune in on. Sunday, we've got a du another double where we've got um, Tyler Goodjohn, really looking forward to speaking to him, especially after what was said with Eddie Earn the other day. Um, and also we've got a, literally a, a sensation fire, um, Osman Aslam, who's just been signed um, by, well, fighting with Gallagher. Don't forget to um, like our web, well, visit our website, intoboxing.com. And uh, give us a like as well. So any questions you've got, we're doing a weekly mailbox. Send them over. We want to speak about what you want to speak about. Thank you so much for watching. Big thank you to our sponsors, GoGo Designs as well, for giving these brilliant hoodies and uniforms when we're wearing them. But thank you so much. Take care. And uh, from Dan and Nathan. Cheers, guys. Have a good night. Take care.